Welcome, everyone. My guest today is managing editor James Kleiman to talk about how loan originators and real estate agents are finding and serving home buyers with rates near 8%. First, here's a word from our sponsor. This is Sarah Wheeler, editor in chief at Housing Wire, with Melinda Wilner, chief operating officer at UWM. Melinda, the wholesale channel has grown significantly over the past year. What does this mean for the industry? Yes, Sarah, it has grown a lot over the last. <laughs> Don't ask. Hang on. <laughs> yes, Sarah, it has grown significantly. What we're seeing is a lot of retail loan officers that are coming into wholesale, knowing that it's just a better way and better value add for their borrowers, too. So it's been a really great shift. And I'd say the majority of what's there. And it's been really great. You know, we've watched the wholesale channel based on the direct funded loans rise up to over 22% in Q2 from uh, data from IMF. So it's really great to see the wholesale channel is growing. It's fantastic to get more borrowers into the wholesale channel because it really, really is the best place to go to for a loan. So we're so excited to watch that pickup, to see that pickup, to continue to support mortgage brokers and borrowers that wholesale really is the best way. Thanks, Melinda. And listeners, you can find out more at BeAMortgageBroker.com. James, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, good to be back, Sarah. Great to have you back. Uh, what an incredible week. Your newsroom has been talking about not only the mortgage rates situation, but how the industry is responding, which I think is so key here. So give us a little background on the on the rates themselves. I know we, I talk about this all the time with Logan, but also would love to pick your brain about what is it that people are doing in this market? Yeah, it's a really tough market, and and there's you know there, there's been a sell off in government bonds and the Federal Reserve's pretty consistent message of tightening has hurt the mortgage backed securities market, and this is an eight trillion dollar market, and I think you could probably characterize it as a route. And so long term borrowing costs are at the highest levels in a decade, and the global investors have been selling off these government bonds, particularly given that the Fed, the central banks in Europe. They're not planning on easing monetary policy anytime soon, right? So you pair that with spreads of about 3%, like I believe it's 2.98% right now. And again, we're, we're at like this the highest levels in 16 years. And there's just a lot of pain right now for the investors who bought securities, thinking these long-term yields have already stabilized. But instead, we're looking at 10-year yields that right now are around like 4 7 And we're talking on Thursday afternoon. Uh, but, you know, there are a lot of analysts and financiers out there who think that they're going to top 5%. And so under those conditions, that means, again, given kind of where the spreads have been, we'll probably see rates top 8% in the coming weeks, unless we do see a lot of strong economic data that suggests, you know, the economy is starting to flounder a little bit. The, Fred, the, the Fed's practice of, of breaking the back of the economy has proven effective. We've had some mixed signals on that one. And, and so, you know, we're, we're at a place now where mortgage rates are about 7.7, 7.8%. And, and that's higher than it's been since August of 2000. So pre 9-11 uh, is, is where we're at. And so, you know, for a lot of prospective borrowers right now, they are past 8%. Only borrowers with very strong credit profiles and substantial down payments are getting, you know, the top top line figure most of the borrowers today, especially when you consider the profile of today's borrower, and we'll get a little bit more into that, they're going to be closer to the 8% mark. Now, some of them are going to be buying points. I think, you know, we may be now in a marketplace, given what's happened, that everybody's going to be buying down points if they're getting a mortgage, unless they have insane levels of equity. Um, but that's that's kind of where we are. And so Connie Kim and I a uh, mortgage reporter here at Housing Wire. We've been talking to a lot of loan officers and branch managers this week. We've been trying to figure out, okay, so what percentage of prospective borrowers are washing out? Like who can do it at 7.1%, 7.2% even, but then they look at 7, 8, 7, 9, and they say, okay, you know, too rich for my blood. I just can't swing this. Um, and then, you know, relatedly, who is pulling the trigger at 7, 7, 7, 8, 7, 9? Are they buying points? Are they you know, taking advantage of different programs, what are they looking to do to close a deal? And and so that's what we've been spending a lot of this, this last kind of, I'd say, two-week period kind of get a better handle on. And, and for me, like a, a lot of the takeaway is that vanilla 30-year mortgage, which has been kind of the titan of the industry for so long, right, the better part of a decade, is just not as effective a product right now with this marketplace, with this buyer. And 
you've also, I think, got a pretty interesting dynamic going on with refis. And we mentioned this last week, Sarah, but about 30% of mortgage applications are refis, which, I mean, like, to me, boggles the mind. Um, And yet only about 12% of originations are refis. So that tells you that a lot of people are looking into it. And then, you know, the numbers come in, the rates keep ticking up, right? And they go, holy heck, like, (laughs) you know, what am I doing this for? Uh, I'm going to wait, you know, I'm going to look at other sources if I need to free up cash or whatnot. Um, But I'm just not going to refinance, do a cash out refi, you know, if there are better options that exist. Um, But we are seeing that, you know, when it relates to the refis, there are lower credit borrowers that are still doing that. And so when you talk to the LOs that are doing those, you know, 12% of loans out there, they're telling you pretty consistently, these are almost exclusively cash out refis, kind of duh, right? No, no big shock there. Um, and then in almost every case, they're either taking it out for a big, uh, you know, home renovation, or they're looking to wipe out credit card or medical debt. And so I, I think that's pretty interesting, but those trends are really starting to come into focus. And we're also seeing a lot more interest for HELOCs and home equity loans. And we're also seeing a lot of interesting innovation in that space. We just published a story today about, you know, new home equity sharing models in which, you know, you basically cut a deal with a company, they'll give you a huge amount of cash up front, say up to $500,000. And then, uh, you know, they, they basically, you're sharing, you know, it's almost like, you know, you got an investor for your, your home. Right. And, and then hopefully they're going to be sharing the gains and sharing the losses too, if it happens to to come to that. But you know, given the marketplace, how low inventory is, not a lot of losses out there. So it, it's it's a pretty interesting, innovative product. Uh, I'm really excited to see more. I think your points about who the buyers are right now is really interesting because you know at the top end, if you have a bunch of money, maybe you just pay cash, or maybe you just go, oh, I'm I don't need to move, right? So I'm just going to hang on. If you're in the middle, uh, you don't have as many options. So I think what you're left with is a lot of people who maybe need down payment assistance, those first time home buyers. I, I don't know, you tell me who, what is the profile of bar, buyer that LOs are really trying to serve right now? So right now, for the most part, what you're seeing is a lot of first time home buyers. You know, in the aggregate, there are still not as many historically as there would have been, right? Then that's principally because there's not much inventory. So there's slim pickings. In some markets, you know, we do still see multiple offer situations, not in every market, you know, but but the fever pitch that we experienced a couple of years ago, like I remember we used to write these stories, Sarah, about how, uh, you know, a buyer would put in $200,000 over bid and then it wouldn't appraise at that number, right? And they'd have to scramble for, you know, to free up some cash to get it done. But there were 37 other buyers who were lined up to buy that home. And so, you know, like that, that was a crazy and a bad market in a different context. What we see now is maybe there's one or two buyers, um, but their cost of financing has basically doubled. And so where, whereas you used to have that kind of secure move up buyer that was often the bread and butter for a lot of LOs, especially those who rely on, uh, you know, kind of repeat business, if you will. I bought a starter home in 2016. My kids are now, you know, in elementary school or whatever. And I, I have a work from home space that I need and, and, you know, my house isn't big enough. So I need to find something. And then you go to look around and you think, oh my God, this is, this is worse than my current house. And it's, you know, $200,000 more than what I bought that house from in 2016. And so they are still finding a couple move up buyers, but very much the minority, they are still looking to find, you know, apartment dwellers, people who have been living in maybe a more expensive rental who have good secure jobs and they ran out of space in their apartment or maybe they move, maybe, you know, whatever. The, the normal, um, you know, checks that apply to the first time home buyer um, apply in these cases, right? The challenge for them is they don't have the equity. They don't really have big down payments as a group they never have. Um but especially now when there is still more demand than there is supply, they still have competition, even though cost of financing is doubled. And so what you're left with is a lot of LOs who say, 
I need to pivot my business from that vanilla 30 year fixed rate mortgage move up buyer to I got this lead from a referral partner, a real estate agent, you know, in like 40% of cases, that's where that business is coming from. And they might need to take advantage of a down payment assistance program, which adds often a lot of complexity to the loan process, usually adds, you know, a couple extra weeks, sometimes more to that process. Um, and a lot of LOs are just not experienced working with these products, right? Because who needed to do this in 2020, 2021? The reality was if you needed down payment assistance, and you're trying to buy a house, you didn't buy a house because you couldn't compete with the other buyers who could and, you know, who would throw huge sums of money um, to close the deal. And so if you're an LO now and you relied on the move up buyers and especially more in sort of that upper middle range or upper range, you're struggling. Jumbo rates are not very good right now. You have a lot of buyers who do have, you know, the, the fortune of maybe having a solid stock portfolio or having just more means than the typical first time home buyer. And they're looking at rates and like, do you know what, do you know what the housing finance situation looks for a house that's priced at $850,000 when you're looking at a mortgage of seven, five, it's insane. Like nobody in their right mind, unless they have an extraordinary need for it, thinks that's a good financial deal. And you'd have to build up a lot of equity for you know the first five plus years to even consider having that be a prudent financial decision. So that market is really shallow right now. A lot of the people who have the means to buy in that class are foregoing mortgages entirely, or they're you know relying on family to help come up with enough money so that they can buy the house outright in cash, or they're you know, in some markets, depending on the market, they're they're getting huge seller giveaways, basically, you know, somebody who's going to, who's going to, you know, lop off a huge number off the sales price. Um, but for the most part, that market is really tough for LOs. And a lot of the top LOs that we talk to that historically are going to be on the leaderboard for, you know, the top, say, 500 originators in America, a lot of them hit those kind of demographics that that kind of segment of the market really hard historically. And so this has been a really difficult market for them. Uh, and, you know, interestingly enough, it's a good time if you're in the VA space, if you're an expert at FHA, if you're working with multi-generational buyers, right? If you want to have mom or dad as a, a co-borrower on the loan, maybe, I don't know, maybe they live with you. Maybe they help care for the grandkids, right? I mean, we're starting to see that a little bit as well. Um, but if I, I think you really need pretty strong product knowledge if you're going to be working with people that require just a lot more in resources and probably need a lot more handholding too. Like it's it's got to be so stressful to be both buying a house in this market and to be trying to help somebody buy a house in this market. So I, I think you probably need a lot of soft skills that I didn't even get into. No. And um, so I was at uh, NAREP last week. So National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. And the the sessions on down payment assistance on VA FHA on like, you know, Hey, this is the kind of buyer you can, they were packed. And that is a yep. group of, you know, uh, a lot of NAREP realtors, very high producers um, do a lot of luxury, um, you know, and, and the message was don't turn your nose up at these buyers. These buyers are going to be your bread and butter. And you have to understand enough about this so that you can figure out who the right lender is for them. You help them with, you know, so if they're interested in the house, you have to have a resource that you can, you can have them go to, to even see like, they're not, they're not the easy ones. They're not the, you know, it, they might need the non QM. They might need a, a down payment assistance. It's going to be a different kind of buyer. And so that was the message that came loud and clear from the stage that people really embraced was like, in this market, those those are very valuable buyers. Yeah, and that's that's a really tough uh, segment to serve because there are 2,100 different down payment assistance programs throughout the country. I, I mean, it's it's a stunning number, and you know, it's it's also the kind of thing where you really have to be patient because government does not work as fluidly or as quickly as I think a lot of LOs, lenders, or borrowers would like, and you may not get it right on the first go. There might be some back and forth. There might be some, you know, some issues that come up 
when you're working with borrowers that probably don't have the best credit score, right? That might be relying on family help, that might be relying on the county to help make that down payment. Uh, and, and if they are, let's say you're only putting 2% down or 3% down, those rates are going to be pretty high, right? I mean, that's a very low LTV. And so, excuse me, a very high LTV. And you're, you're really going to want to make sure that you're vigilant about the underwriting to make sure that all of the people on the loan have, if not adequate reserves, that they're working, that they have stable jobs. And, you know, I think to their credit, the FHA has done a lot of good in making sure that they, one, I, I think keep fairly high standards, all things considered, you know, we go back to 2007, 2006, before, you know, the, the great financial crisis, uh, when standards were too lax, but the FHA is starting to remove certain impediments, you know, to make sure that the borrowers still have a shot at getting a house. They still have, you know, resources, sometimes in the form of grants, right? Sometimes in the form of other assistance and that, you know, if you had a three week period in which you were between jobs, that it doesn't sink your application because that is the kind of thing that in the past would have gotten a red flag on some FHA applications. And then, so what you're, you're going to remove the, the opportunity for an otherwise qualified buyer to buy a house in one of the toughest markets in memory because they wanted two weeks of vacation before they started a job, like, you know, crazy stuff like that. Right. I mean, reducing the MMI, I think, I think they could have gone a lot further. You know, they, they got it down to 55 basis points, which, okay, better. Um, I think they could drop that even more. You know, the problem right now is until the Fed really significantly changes their direction, and I don't think any of us anticipate changes like that happening until maybe the second quarter, right? Maybe the third quarter of next year. It's, it's really a guessing game. I'm, I'm just, you know, hazarding a guess. Um <laughs> These are going to be the buyers, right? You know, unless the, the Fed decides to buy MBS again or the Japanese go crazy for MBS, the Chinese get in there, the hedge funds, the you know, the, the big banks that have kind of shied away from MBS decide to get in there before some bigger capital restrictions from Basel III hit their balances. You know, we're, we're probably going to see conditions like this. Maybe they won't be in the eights, but maybe they won't be in the sixes either, right? And you just, you, you can't, you can't make it work for most people in, in middle America. You can't make it work for most people, you know, on the margins and, and, you know, the people who can do it don't want to do it. And they already got theirs in 2020, 2021. So the Fed created a huge problem um, there for housing, at least creating another huge problem of, of a similar stripe. Uh, and, um, you know, it's it's going to be a difficult market for even the best originator out there. I look at, we have a mortgage recruiting software called Modex. Uh, I know a bunch of people in the industry use it. And every now and then I like to look up like, okay, who are the top originators in the country? How are they doing, you know, year to date compared to where they were last year? And, you know, the data is maybe like a little bit, uh, like a month or two behind, especially if some lenders still have it on portfolio, it's not sold yet. Um, but we're looking at, for the top producers, I'm just ball parking it. Probably about they're down about sixty percent from last year. That's crazy. Nobody's gonna even get close to a billion. Like we used to always talk about Chant, you know, being the billion dollar man, and and there are often a couple others who got close to that club or just joined it. He's not gonna get anywhere close. He's looking at about four hundred something million right now, uh, and he's he's a really really sharp guy. He's got a business unto himself, you know, at guaranteed rates, does phenomenal work, really sharp. Um, and if chance is, I don't know, probably going to get into the high fives, low sixes, um, you know, most LOs that don't have the, the resources and the name recognition and, um, you know, just the, the savvy uh, are, are probably not going to make it. So, I've got a call later with Jeff Walton at Ingenious, and we're going to be talking about how many LOs are probably not going to make it to shore uh, over the next year as we look at rates maybe at 8%. Uh, and so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that next week, Sarah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a sobering time. And I think if you're an LO who hasn't mastered the DPA, who hasn't really gotten into the, the guts of an FHA 
program or really figured out, you know, some of the, the, the lower cost Fannie uh, options, Freddie options, you're doing yourself a disservice and, and you're going to really struggle to get clients because if you're also a real estate agent and you're referring, you know, a huge amount of your business to LOs, you're not going to take a shot at somebody who doesn't know what they're doing with these programs, right? Because you only have one shot with a lot of clients in some cases too, right? So it's, it's always been a relationship business. And even though a lot of people talk about, you know, how many leads to get online and all that, yeah, not in this marketplace. Yeah, I've been talking to tech execs at different lenders, at real estate companies and at tech companies. And, you know, one of them that I'll, I'll be publishing in a couple of weeks, he was like, you know, a couple of years ago, everything was about leads, leads, leads. What, you know, if, if you were trying to recruit people or what the LOs wanted to talk about, he goes, now they just want to like, what's your rate, 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 rate. I mean, nobody, you know, leads are, are, are useless if you don't have the right rate. And, and it all comes down to that from his perspective. Totally understand that. And, you know, I thought it was interesting. Um, one of Connie's um, stories that she wrote this week that you guys worked on was the fact that with these surging rates, then, you know, more, especially first time home buyers are looking to mom and dad, but it's not just like, so at NAREP, they talked a lot about, um, you know, multi-gen households and how that is, has been something that, people in that community have been doing for quite some time, but this is even different. This is like people who are stepping in as like creditors, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to be staying in the house. They just need to lend their credit and their money because there's no other way those kids are going to be able to, or kids, you know, kids um, are going to be able to, to do it. And, and you mentioned that and that's just, um, what's crazy. Well, it's a double-edged sword, right? So on, on the one hand, if you're the LO and you have a borrower who like their DTI levels are just way too high. You know, they're already at like 50 something percent and they just don't qualify, right? Like Fannie, Freddie say, okay, sorry, dude. You know, you, just, you don't make the kind of income that you need to afford this house. And the FHA, maybe, you know, for other reasons, you, you can't um, afford some of the fees or, you know, it just, the math doesn't work. You can have mom or dad. Hopefully they have good credit. Hopefully they have liquidity. Hopefully they have still a job or, you know, some ability to help uh, with the finances of that loan. On the other hand, sometimes you're the LO and now you're competing with mom and dad, right? Because mom and dad might just have enough cash to say, look, we're going to, we're going to consider this like an early generational, <laughs> you know, handoff basically before, before we get to our later years and die. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of dynamics at play here and, and you have to be sharp and you have to talk to people. You know, I, I just don't think the online lead generation tool is, is um, you know, is valuable in a marketplace like this. I think in a normal market where you see, you know, people who can do it, people who just need a little bit of help, people who are more comfortable working entirely online, especially through a refi, right? How many people just utilize Rocket because they saw a commercial from a Super Bowl ad in, you know, 2018, let's say. 2018 is not the best year for refis, but 2017, whatever, uh, you know, and um, and then they just said, OK, you know, I'm going to click a button. It's a little more complex and click a button, a few more steps involved, of course. But, you know, that's that's where there's some comfort. But nobody's doing a rate term refi now. And what kind of leads are you getting online right now at this point anyway? I think you're probably going to find a lot of noise. Probably not a few, not a lot of hot leads are coming from online sources, um, you know, but but also like the other thing about the housing market, everything is interconnected. And we haven't even talked about what impacts the buyer commission lawsuits might bring on that and might, you know, have on lead generation might have on, you know, how kind of that funnel goes. So it's going to be a really interesting housing market over the next couple of years. I think rates are going to trend down. We might never in our, maybe not lifetime, I'm, I'm only 37. So hopefully in, in my lifetime, we'll see rates you know, back below 4%, but probably not for a while. And and that means that different tools are needed and different strategies must be utilized. And, you know, people talk about online leads being the kind of the holy grail because they're so much cheaper, you know, ultimately, if you're not harvesting your own portfolio and it's, it's expensive and time consuming working with real estate agents, you know, they're fickle too, right? You got to keep them happy. So hopefully you can build a better mousetrap, but not a lot of mice right now in this market. 
I love that. Perfect analogy. Um, James, thank you so much for being on. Always appreciate it. And we will definitely talk again next week after you've had time to uh, to talk to some more people about that. And we will be at Housing Wire Annual next week. So for our listeners who are going, come by. We're going to have a news desk in the round situation. You can come by and meet James, meet the uh, some of the other reporters in the newsroom who are going. Of course, I'll be there. And um, we'd love to meet and greet people. We even have a you know time set aside if you want to join up and and get to know the the newsroom. Absolutely, yeah. Look forward to meeting everybody. Please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. It's James at hwmedia.com, and look forward to seeing everybody in ninety two degree Texas. Insane, totally insane, <laughs> but it is what it is. Listen, it's when we had GOE in Austin. Uh, what in in June? It was 105, so 90 is going to feel like nothing. 90 is going to feel so good. Listen, it's going to be great. <laughs> Look how pale I am. I, I don't do 90. Yeah, I'm an indoor cat. <laughs> Thank you for being on, James. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.